صلوات على محمد وآل محمد صل على محمد وآل محمد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والحمد لله والحمد لله الذي جعلنا من المتمسكين بولاية أمير المؤمنين ولئمة المعصومين عليهم السلام والحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله والحمد لله الذي لا يبلغ مدحته القائلون ولا يحصي نعماءه العادون ولا يودي حقه المجتهدون الذي لا يدركه بعد الهمم ولا يناله غوص الفطن الذي ليس لصفته حد محدود ولا نعت موجود ولا وقت معدود ولا أجل ممدود فطر الخلائق بقدرته ونشر الرياح برحمته ووتد بالسخور ميدان أرضه ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين خاتم النبيين شفيع المذنبين حبيب الله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد صل على محمد وآل محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين ولعنة الله على عدائهم أجمعين من يوم عداوتهم إلى يوم الدين عما بعد فقد قال الله عز وجل في كتابه الحكيم وهو أصدق القائلين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذ ابتلي إبراهيم ربه بكلمات فأتمهن قال إني جاعلك للناس إماما آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد عما بعد السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته I begin in the name of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. There is no doubt that it's due to His kindness and generosity that He gives us opportunities such as these where we gather in remembrance and glorification of Him Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Next, I'd like to congratulate our living Imam, Imam Al Hujja Ajalallahu Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. And to each and every one of you as we celebrate Eid and Eid Mubarak to each and every one of you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our amal and our efforts. We pray to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala that the hujjaj and the zuwar come back home safely insha'Allah. And most importantly as well, as importantly that we get an opportunity to go for hajj or ziyarat in the next year insha'Allah. Eid al-Adha is known as the Eid or the festival of sacrifice. And the title of sacrifice has been given to this particular Eid um, in reference or in particular because of the sacrifices that were made by Nabi Ibrahim alayhi wa ala nabiyina wa alihi afdalu salatu wa salam. <coughs> Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam has been described um, in the Holy Quran, in the verse that I res- read from Surah Al Baqarah, verse number 124, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذِ ابْتَلَى إِبْرَاهِيمَ رَبُّهُ بِكَلِمَاتٍ فَأَتَمَّهُنْ He says that your Lord, when his Lord tested Ibrahim with kalimat. Kalimat here refers to certain words, but in fact, the word kalima in Arabic, as we all know, when we say, we recite the kalima, Kalima means word, but we recite sentences. So the word kalima in Arabic has a vast meaning where it could mean a word, it could mean sentences. And here it refers to certain tests or trials or situations that Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam was put into. And then when he fulfilled them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَالَ إِنِّي جَاعِلُكَ لِلنَّاسِ 
Imam, that I have made you for mankind an Imam. It is through the passing of these tests that the ranks of Ibrahim alayhi salam rose. What were these tests of Ibrahim? These are very famous and stories that we tell our children from a young age. He was tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he placed him amongst idol worshippers. People who used to associate partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he rose to that from that test. He was tested by physically being assaulted and throwing into the fire. He rose from that test. He was tested by having to migrate from his watan to another place that was better for him and his family. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested him and he passed that test. He was then tested by leaving his family in a barren land. He left them for the sake of God to seek some better life for them and his family. He was tested and he passed. And then lastly, the greatest test there is that was given to him was the test of sacrifice. And yesterday as we read in Dua'i Arafah that Imam al Hussein alayhi afdalu salatu wa salam Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad You guys have to match my energy. Yeah, I'm bringing a lot of energy for 7.30 in the morning. Yeah? Uh, so please, match my energy with the loud recitations of Salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Amma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. And I'll give you more energy now. Yeah? He was tested yeah, with sacrificing his son. In Dua Arafah yesterday, we recited very beautifully where Imam says that he was tested with the sacrifice after he had reached an elderly age. Yeah? And Ibrahim salam waited for a long time for children. Finally, he was granted a child in his old age, Imam says. And then Allah says, I want you to sacrifice him. What an amazing test. Yeah? What an amazing test. You know, when you look at the tests of Ibrahim, we can look at it from one of two ways. One way is it is a remarkable um, characteristics of an individual. An individual who is higher in rank than most individuals. This is why he is a Nabi. This is why not only he is a Nabi, he is a Rasul. This is why not only is he a Rasul, he is from the Ulul Azam. And not only is he from the Ulul Azam, he was ranked as an Imam. So we can look at him as a story of an individual who was remarkable. Yeah? And Alhamdulillah, he was remarkable. There is no <laughs> doubt about that. Or we can look at the story of Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam as an example that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving to every one of his creation regarding the potential of the individual when they are put into tests. Yeah? We look at him and say, subhanallah, look at all the tests that Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam had to go through. How do we connect with that? We can connect through that by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala trying to show us that when we are put into the fire, we as individuals, no matter what we do and where we are, we have great potential given to us, programmed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I think this is a major lesson that we have to take in the world that we live in today. We are faced with challenges. We are faced with difficulties. We are faced with obstacles. Yeah? What are we going to do to overcome those obstacles? Are we going to hide and run away? Or are we going to rise the way Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam rose and overcome those challenges? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing to us how one individual can have a tremendous effect on society as a whole. Yeah? Look at what Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam did. Yeah? He not only was able to prove the idol worshippers wrong, but he was able to complete all these tests where now, maybe 3,000 years later, we still go to Hajj and imitate the acts of Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam. Yeah? That's the change that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to show us. We may not realize, my brothers and sisters, but each one of us has that ability to transform the society that we live in around us. Take an example of our homes. Yeah? If in my home I make sure that I do not allow shaitani tendencies to come into my home, where there's no music that is played in my home, where there are no musical instruments in my home, there are no tools of gambling in my home, there are no drugs or alcohol in my home, I maintain a positive environment, that change will last for generations to come. Yeah? Because that akhlaq and those ethics and that way of life will be transferred to my child who then inshallah will transfer it to his children. But if I allow in my house 
the alat of shaitan to be present yeah where there is no ahkam of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being represented then i have taken the fabric of deen from my family and you will not see it in future generations so how individually we can all make a positive change in society is being shown to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is just the example of the family, right? Imagine the example in society when we, are, when we go out there and represent Islam the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to represent Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Nabi Ibrahim, Inna Ibrahim kana ummatan qanitan lillahi hanifa. Yeah. وَلَمْ يَكُ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Indeed, Ibrahim was an ummah on his own. Yeah? Nabi Ibrahim was an ummah on his own, obedient and steadfast. Yeah? Hanif, one who was upright. Right? What does that mean? That he was an ummah. We know what an ummah is, isn't it? An ummah is a nation. Yeah? An ummah, ummah comprises of different people with different backgrounds and they work together to create a holistic and a single goal to which they work towards. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that Nabi Ibrahim was an ummah on himself, right? What that means is that Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam was a united individual within himself. Ideologically, belief-wise, practice-wise, akhlaq-wise, intention-wise, thought-wise, everything. Nabi Ibrahim was not conflicted. Nabi Ibrahim was united within himself. And it is that unity, individual unity, that then led to this societal unity that we see today we are still emulating in society, yeah? in our lives. What does that mean? That means that my brothers and sisters, if we want to make a change in society, if we want to make a change in our families, it begins with ourselves. Yeah? It begins with becoming unified on our own. I can't have different, today I am grumpy, tomorrow I am happy, the next day I am angry, and I become all of these different persons because I don't know what I am. Yeah? I don't know who I am. Right? And so one day I will go to a restaurant which serves alcohol. The next day I'll say, no, it's not allowed to go. The third day I will go to a mixed gathering. The fourth day I'll say, no, it's not allowed to go. Why am I flip-flopping like this? Yeah? Why have I become a pancake like this? Right? Because I have not unified myself. Right? Once we become an ummah ourselves, once we become steadfast on our own, we will know the right way of the the right way of action. We will know which path we have to tread because the compass has been set by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and therefore the goal that we have for each and every one of us is to learn to become an ummah on our own. And if once we become an ummah on our own, then collectively with individual ummahs all around, we can unite to become a tremendous and a strong ummah. Right? But how do we do that? I wish it was that easy, right? That I said, today I'm an ummah, khalas. Yeah? But it doesn't work that way. Yeah? We, it, it is a challenge, right? Nabi Ibrahim had to go through a series of tests before he was given that rank. Nothing is going to be given to us. Yeah? Nothing is delivered to us. It has to be earned from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so we start with the basics. Today is Eid al-Adha, the Eid of sacrifice. Yeah? It is the representation of the sacrifice of Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam. The people, the hujjaj, who are there in the plains of Mina, have gone and have sacrificed an animal yeah? as a representation of their inner lusts and inner desires that they are sacrificing now. Yeah? We don't have an opportunity or didn't have an opportunity to go for Hajj this year. The question we ask ourselves is, how can we still sacrifice something for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yeah? What can I sacrifice for God today? This is a question that you have to ask yourselves and I have to ask myself. Whatever it is, something, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether it is my ego, whether it is my pride, whether it is my lust, whether it is my desire of a particular thing or object, whatever it is, we are best aware of what is in our souls. We have to sacrifice those things which are impediments in our journey to become unified for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to ask ourselves, what is causing me to be disunited? 
What is it? Yeah? Why am I still desiring these things which I know to be haram? We talked about this yesterday in the majlis for those who attended. Oftentimes, the reason I am conflicted is because there is a disconnect between my brain and my heart. Yeah? My brain knows the truth. My brain knows. I think all of us here yeah, believe in God, at least akli. Yeah? We believe in this is the right deen, at least akli. Yeah? But our heart, yeah, our soul may not be fully convinced yet. Yeah? And the reason it's not fully convinced is because I still desire things that Allah does not like. Yeah? Why? If my aql knows it to be true, why come my heart doesn't know it to be true? These are indications of conflict within ourselves. And if we can identify the point of conflict, then we can work towards sacrificing that for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, we're always trying to make changes externally. Always. Right? Always. Um, whether it is materially, where I want to buy a new car, I want to buy a new house, I want to paint the masjid, yeah? I want to have more activities for the youth, I want to do all of these things, I want to get a better job, whatever. right? But internally, what have we done yeah, to change our course of life? What have I done to become a better individual? And until the moment we can do that, right? make that change individually, we will not see a change in society externally. And this is the challenge that we have today. This is what Imam al Hussein, alayhi afdalu salatu wa salam, Amma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad, rose for in Karbala. Yeah? That he rose to bring change in society one individual at a time. And inshallah, as the month of Muharram is coming, I pray that we can look inward take the motivation from this day and sacrifice one thing we're not asking to sacrifice everything one thing for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that inshallah truly this day becomes an Eid for us and for each and every and for the society at large wa akhiru da'wan an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen a'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد صدق الله العلي العظيم سل على محمد وعلى محمد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان العين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والحمد لله قاسم الجبارين مبير الظالمين مدرك الهاربين نكال الظالمين سريخ المستصرخين موضع حاجات الطالبين معتمد المؤمنين اللهم صل على خاتم النبيين وسيد المرسلين محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وصل على سيد الوصيين أمير المؤمنين علي بن أبي طالب صل على محمد وعلى محمد وصل على الصديقة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين صل على محمد وعلى محمد وصل على سبت الرحمة وإمام الهدى الحسن والحسين سيد شباب أهل الجنة وعلى محمد وصل على علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والحجة القائم المهدي صل على محمد وعلى محمد صلاة لا غاية لعددها ولا نهاية لمددها ولا نفاد لأمدها اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات وتابع بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات 
انك مجيب الدعوات انك على كل شيء قدير صلي على محمد وعلى محمد as we talked about in the first sermon the need to self sacrifice sacrifice something within us and to practice self control on different things you know one of the ways in which we can do so is by removing any obstacles which are a hindrance to me when i look at my individual life or as a societal life and i find that there are things in that life that are a hindrance to me i have to have the courage to remove it like bad friends for example or as the example we got this week in the media um the british court sentenced um a self proclaimed scholar by the name of anjum choudhury to 5 and 1/2 years in prison um because of hate speech and his support for ISIS i'm sure you've heard of this name anjum or anjum choudhury um he has been in the news in particular um in the uk for many years now um spreading hate speaking a version of islam that any muslim would be repulsed by let alone a non muslim um and this week um after nearly two decades of skirting around the law even though he was preaching hate under the banner of free speech um backing extremism supporting death supporting actions abroad to bring about more violence um he was finally arrested in july and convicted um last week to five and a half years in prison in particular for his open support to daesh and his allegiance to the caliphate of daesh um when you look at this person you know it is um it is remarkable that he was allowed to continue for so long right because of the type of speech that he was um constantly producing and very interestingly you know that there were hardly any mosques or no mosques that even gave him the platform to speak he would speak outside outside the mosques he would speak on street corners and the only reason he even became popular was because the mass media gave him a platform right that whenever they wanted a muslim they knew the best muslim to cause even more controversy would be this man so instead of coming to a practicing god fearing muslim they would come to him so that more flames can be um risen and that more animosity and hatred could be driven in fact you know that um uh, many times um what we would call moderate muslims i don't assign i don't like assigning labels like this but this is um uh, an unfortunate circumstance to do so um would complain to the mass media we've seen cases of this in particular in in the uk as this was affected um where they urged the media do not give him attention you are giving him no one else is giving him attention no mosques are giving him the platform um when you look at his arrest and persecution um i believe that this act must be commended yeah by the british courts even though we may not be eye to eye with their policies and and what they do abroad but what they did here in particular i think is very important and it's something that we need to be aware of here in the west in particular in canada that when we see hate speech like this yeah that we do not allow hate speech like this to go um unnoticed or without doing anything to try and prevent it from happening further right um i think this is a responsibility that each and every one of us have you know we are already fighting um a rise in islamophobia with particular what is happening um in the united states right now even in england right now it's amazing though right when you look at the hypocrisy is that they arrested him and i think rightfully so that they arrested him but they allow their own politicians to spew hate and bigotry and xenophobia and no one does anything to prevent that or no one does anything to stop that when they see the effects of that xenophobia and bigotry i think there's a lot of duplicity and hypocrisy in that in that w- approach but i think for us in particular here in canada alhamdulillah we have not been victimized with too much islamophobia but it is there right um, none of us can deny it um it is there you know only when was it saturday this is the first time this happened to me that i was out um and someone called my work line the number that's on the the internet um and this person began uh spewing absolute hatred and uh, bigotry on the phone towards me he am um, calling muslims terrorists 
um, calling us that we need to leave this country, calling the prophets all types of names. Alhamdulillah, in six years this hasn't happened, but this was the first time. And it's a little bit unnerving. Yes, it is unnerving because obviously that person um, didn't have the courage to have his number appear. He blocked his number um, when he called. Um, but you can see that there are people who feel this way. And on, you can't add fuel to that fire by having people who speak or preach hatred. Yeah, you can't. You can't couple that with somebody who is going to cause and make this situation even worse. And therefore, you know, my brothers and sisters, we all have this responsibility. Whether you're on social media and you see someone spewing hate, whether it is our own sectarian hate or whether it is hate for non-Muslims, this has to be stopped and it has to be reported. We can't be afraid of reporting, right? Because we are trying to keep Canada here in the GTA um, safe. Yeah? We don't want what is happening in different parts of the world to happen here. We don't want what is happening in America to happen here to that extent. Right? So we, have, we cannot be afraid to report it. And furthermore, I think the responsibility even goes further. When we go out in the streets to protest, we need to make sure that the people that we are assigning the platform to speak for us do not preach hate. Yeah? You can't go around and saying down, down America on the streets here. Yeah? You can't go around death to America on the streets here. Because the people can't put it together. They can't. Yeah? They see a Muslim who needs help, but then they're claiming death to America at the same time. Yeah? Who would help us? Yeah? We have to be smart. Yeah? We have to think about what we're doing and what message we are spreading. We can't have people come here, outside speakers who will come here in these months of Muharram and suffer and allow them to spew hate from the manabir. We can't. Whether it is sectarian hate, whether it is extremism of different sorts, it can't be allowed. We who have lived in Canada for years now have tried our best to create a society that is peaceful. Yeah? That we can get along with our neighbors. And you can't have one person who comes for two weeks and ruins everything that we have built for the last decade or two decades. Right? So this is a responsibility, my brothers and sisters, that each and every one of us have yeah? to make sure that hate, hate of any kind, right? is not spewed and we don't give it the platform to be spewed from here. And inshallah, if we do so, we can then try and keep our streets and our nation as safe as possible for our future generations. May Allah give us the strength to do so and may Allah guide us on the right path, inshallah. Wa akhiru da'wan. An alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرٍ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاسَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاسَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ رَحِمَ اللَّهُ مَنْ كَرَى سُورَةِ الْمُبَارَكَةِ الْفَاتِحَةِ تَسْبِقُهَا الصَّلَاةِ عَلَى مُحَمَّدٍ وَآلِ مُحَمَّدٍ